Greetings, y'all. Today's video is going to be a little different. It's going to be a chronicle of my saga trying to solve the issue of increased oil consumption in my 2016 Kia Sorento SUV. This vehicle was new to me about a year and a half ago, and I got it at around 58,000 miles. And because as a nomad, I was traveling so often, I got very regular and frequent oil changes and didn't notice this oil consumption issue until I was in one spot for a while. Mm. I checked the oil. The stick is down to the lowest indicator. What's going on with that? That is when I began to learn about GDI engines gasoline direct injection, which is different than old school port fuel injectors. There are lots of videos out there on YouTube University that will explain the difference and why they're there and why they should be so much better and also the problems with them, which I am slowly getting up to speed on, but I am by no means an expert. I will list a few of those sources so any of you who are suffering from the same malady um, can start your breadcrumb trail of possible solutions. The first phase of solutions that I tried was being consistent about fueling up with top tier gasoline. I was looking at my owner's manual in teeny tiny print. It was recommended rather than whatever's cheapest on Gas Buddy. Surprisingly enough, the companies who do have top tier gasoline in their pumps, often it's possible to pay the same price as the lowest of non-detergent containing gasoline, which is what these top tiers are. So that was rather painless. Just needed to look for this sticker on the pump. And I also kept a list with me on my phone of which ones I should use or not. The next phase of solution was at an oil change to use various additives to the gasoline and to the oil to see if those would help. One of them being Royal Purple 18,000 Fuel Injector Cleaner, Liquid Moly Motor Oil Saver, Liquid Moly Proline Engine Flush, CRC Intake Valve Cleaner, and Chevron Tecron Concentrate, which I actually noticed that that's the detergent that's in these top tier gasolines. So those are still sitting in the box and I actually should have brought those with me on the trip because I've noticed that in some areas those top tier gasolines are much more expensive than the regular ones. So five bucks to get another bottle of the Tecron additive and buy cheaper gasoline or buy the more expensive gasoline for about the same price of the bottle. What are you going to do? Also in research found that a particular type of oil was recommended for this oil consumption issue, which is Castrol Edge 5W30 Advanced Full Synthetic Motor Oil. So purchase some of that as well to do oil change, which I'm learning to do myself. Those particular solutions did not cause any noticeable changes in my oil consumption, which was about a quart every thousand miles, which apparently isn't unusual with the GDI engine. It's just, oh my gosh, getting used to that. So moved on to the next layer of possible solutions, which is replacing something called a PCV valve, which is very small, very inexpensive, very easy to change and depending on how clogged that thing is could possibly be a game changer for this situation. Unfortunately I don't have any footage of that process because I was so in it at the time and didn't think about it. However, 
shaking the valve that we took out. Um, it wasn't as crisp a sound as the newer one, but it definitely wasn't clogged enough to be causing issues. There were lots of carbon shaving buildup on it, um, but replacing the valve, no noticeable differences. So that left the most labor-intensive, invasive solution, which is using walnut shells that have been crushed to blast the carbon buildup on the intake valves, which is the major culprit. The process ended up taking an entire 12-hour period in one day and four hours the next to put everything back into place. The solution that was tried with the PCV valve and all of the additives in the oil and the gasoline and a change in the kind of oil used after a trip of about 500 miles there was no noticeable difference and actually there's a little bit more oil consumption. After this solution the oil has not gone down at all after I think we've gone 300 miles. The computer is a little confused and not sure what to do with the new situation. Um, the check engine light has come on, gone off, come on, gone off, come on. And the code that comes up using an OBD reader indicates that the intake valve runner is not quite, either not quite back into place or it needs to be replaced. There aren't any symptoms of the engine running poorly so we're kind of waiting to see what's going to happen with that. There is one other solution if this one doesn't take that involves an OCC or oil catch can that catches the oil that's going where it shouldn't go and causing all of those issues. So that's also a possible solution. It would be nice if manufacturers were acknowledging this issue and doing something about it in the car creation process, but apparently they're not. So it's up to us to come up with these homespun, in some cases, um, jerry-rigged, uh, just DIY solutions. In the research that we did, it was pretty clear that this issue starts happening between 60, 80, 100,000 miles, and cleaning the intake valves should happen in the multiples of those mileages. So 60,000, 120,000, 180,000, because it's gonna happen. So right now, I have squeaky clean intake valves. I'll continue to use either an additive when I buy cheap gas or buy top tier gasoline. I'll continue to use the special type of castor oil when I do the oil changes. And if it seems like it's a good idea, install an oil catch can just to cover all of the bases. Thankfully, the Sorento has been a fantastic automobile otherwise, and I don't have other problems that I'm dealing with. It's just this oil consumption thing. I will be doing a follow-up in a month or so to see what's happened with the gas mileage and the oil consumption, just to provide more breadcrumbs in the trail for other people to solve their problems with this GDI engine issue. I did contact a Kia dealership to get a quote on how much it would cost to get them to do this intake valve cleaning and I haven't heard back from them so I'm gonna have to follow up on that. So if you're dealing with some type of vehicle issue all the best to you. Hopefully you find a, an easy and cheap solution. If not, that's part of the Nomad deal. Being able to have freedom on the road involves dealing with whatever comes up. 
So thanks to everybody who contributed their knowledge on YouTube so we could do this process ourselves and hopefully this will help somebody else as well. Have a good one and see you down the road.